Let's get started tying this hair's ear version of the blowtorch. So I have a size 16 jig hook in the vise and a 2.8 millimeter slotted tungsten bead. You could also do that with an inverting tungsten bead as well. And you can use the same size hook if you want. A 16 or a 14 is what I tend to fish this pattern the most in. But uh, you can vary the bead size if you need to to get more weight as well. That same, this same uh, hook could take a 3.3 mil bead or even a 3.8 if you need it to. So uh, I'm just uh, tying on some ADOT Rusty Dunn Uni thread. And I'm gonna hurry and cover most of the shank. And next, I'm going to add three strands of Globrite number seven. So fluorescent Globrite floss. And number seven is kind of their lighter shade of fluorescent orange, almost like a sunburst shade. Um, and you could try other shades with this variation of the blowtorch as well, but this is the one that seems to match it the best for me and that I've had a lot of success with. So I just cut one long strand of this material and then I went ahead and matched up their ends and uh, now I've got three strands and I'm just gonna make a pinch wrap. So I'll put that thread in between my fingers right here, pinch with my fingers, wrap around, and then pull up to get tension. And I can slide those fibers back so I don't really have to trim them off. All right. And then I'm gonna trim that tag really quite short. You'll see that it's about even with the bend of the hook. Um, the number one mistake I see on blow torches when most people time is they either use too much tag material or they make the tag too long. Uh, this is supposed to be a hot spot, but uh, you know, kind of a trigger point, but it's not supposed to be uh, a big overwhelming <laughs> Um, tail that, that just kind of takes over the fly. So now I'm going to make a dubbing loop and I'm not going to put any dubbing in this dubbing loop. I'm going to use this as uh, ribbing. So I've got some, I've got my Stonfo um, rotary dubbing loop tool here and I'm going to make that dubbing loop, pull it to the back and I can kind of just hang that dubbing loop on the back of my vise on one of the knobs. And now I'll go back up just a little bit again and put the, this is pearl sulky tinsel. And I'm gonna put this on the near side of the hook. And the dubbing loop thread went on the far side of the hook and I'll explain that the reason why in a second. All right, so now I have some hair's ear dubbing and you could use any type of hair's ear you, you want. Um, this happens to be a uh, hairline hair's ear, but uh, we've got Fafsna Scruffy Dub, we've got Troutline Mad Rabbit and a whole bunch of uh, different types of hair's ear type dubbing in the shop. We also have some squirrel dubbing from, uh, some UV tracer squirrel dubbing from uh, Nature Spirit and um, there's lots of good options out there, but original hair's ear is just fine. And I've dubbed a little bit of a typical dubbing noodle on here. I want just enough to cover about three quarters of the body on here. I want to leave a little bit of space for the CDC hackle and a collar up front. Now, there's some guard hairs that are hanging out here that are a little too long for my taste, so I've just trimmed them off. Um, and I'm gonna wrap this pearl sulky tinsel. I want this tinsel to go, uh, if I'm looking at the front of the fly, let's say, I want this to go counterclockwise. So basically the first wrap, it's gonna go underneath the hook, and that's why I wanted it on the near side, because I want that first wrap to go underneath the hook so that if fish take that, it's a little bit more durable. If it goes over the back of the hook to begin with, like up top here, then it's usually more um, prone to get broken by fish's teeth. So by putting it under the hook, it tends to shield it a little bit. Now, I'm gonna take the dubbing loop tool and spin it. 
and I'm using this as counter ribs. So you could use some monofilament for this, but I've actually found that the thread is more durable than monofilament, which also tends to get cut by teeth because one of my main goals in tying any fly is to have it as durable as possible and to help it to last as long as possible. So that's what I'm doing with this thread here. I've spun it in that dubbing loop so it's double layer and then it's really bound up tight and it is very durable. All right, so now the sulky is counter ribbed and that should last as long as you have that fly. I'm gonna now just take a tiny little pinch of more dubbing and make a little bit of a dubbing ball. And what that's gonna do is help flare out the CDC hackle here a little bit. And now I've got a CDC feather and I need to prepare this feather a little bit. So I stroke the feather down like that and splay the fibers out. And then I'm gonna cut the base off the feather on both sides, the really webby stuff at the bottom. Because if that gets trapped in there, it tends to really overdress the fly. And then I'm actually gonna also cut about half of the fibers off on one side of the, the feather as well, so that I don't have very much left. And that will make it so I can make a couple turns of the tackle without it getting overdressed. Then I just stroke those fibers again uh, I'll accept at the tip, tie the tip in. I'll cut that waist tip out. And then I'll take my hackle pliers here and make a couple of wraps. If you wanted, you could do this with a rotary function, but it's only a couple turns, so it's pretty easy to just do it standard rotation. So the way that was looking, I made actually about two and a half wraps. And it's probably slightly overdressed to my eye, but if I'd gone <laughs> one and a half or just two wraps, it looked slightly under. So um, this still looks pretty good. If I have to, I can go in and just trim a few of those fibers out. And then I'm uh, once I've tied that down, I'm just gonna put a couple of thread wraps back into the fibers a little bit because I want to really bind that down the quill itself. The quill is, you know, a fairly fragile part of a CDC feather. So if I can put some thread wraps over the top of that quill and bind it down, it'll protect them a little bit and keep them from uh, falling apart. And then the last step to the fly here is to just add a little more dubbing. Now I'm adding some more hairs here, but you could easily add some different dubbing here for some contrast or another hot spot. Um, UV pink ice dub works well. Uh, peacock black ice dub works well. There's lots of different dubbings you could try here. So it doesn't have to just be hairzer, but that's what I did on this one. You could also just try a different color of hairzer, like a darker one for a little more contrast. Now I'm gonna uh, add some super glue to the thread here. And I'm gonna make two or three wraps with that, and then grab my whip finisher and do three turns with the rest of the super glue on there. And what that does is it puts super glue under the whip, whip finishes and then throughout the wraps, and that will keep that whip finish from coming apart pretty much forever. And I could leave the fly as is right now, but the, the hackle is just a little, a little too Shaggy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of the vise and I splay the fibers, kind of trap them under my right hand. And then I come in and use my left thumb and index finger and kind of break those fibers off about even with the back of the hook. And now you'll see that I have soft tackle that's about the right length, kind of even with the back of the hook and Nice and spread around. It is a little too overdressed for me, for my liking. So I'm just gonna trim a couple of those fibers up top off. And that's the finished hair's ear version of the blowtorch. Uh, this is a great fly, um, all year long for me, all winter. And uh, uh, I've been using it a lot during the, the winter this year and last year. It, fish, it fishes really well with a pink bead uh, in the winter a lot, a metallic pink bead. Uh, so that's another version or slight variation of this to try. 
But I hope you go out and, and give it a go on your local water and that it uh, works really well for you. If the blowtorch itself has worked for you, I'm sure this one will. And this one also tends to work really, uh, really well during caddis hatches for whatever reason. Um, it, you know, whether it looks like a pupa or not, they seem to take it during that time. So give it a go during the summer also. Um, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. So I hope you, that you enjoyed this fly and that you give it a, uh, a go out on your local water. Thanks for watching.